I am, thank you all for having me back. I am going to try to talk without a microphone. Uh, no, you want the microphone? Okay. Let me see if I can get it. Let me see if I can get it in this stand and that might make it easier because I'm going to be turning slides and turning slides and, and all kinds of stuff. Okay. 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 <clears throat> all right. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for, for having me back or for what Alan and I were talking about we think is the sixth year. Uh, I always look forward to coming and sharing with this club. Always a good turnout. Alan, you must do a very good job of hiding who's going to be speaking uh, this particular week because people continue to show up. Um, something before I start uh, that, I, that I have and I want to share with you is um, Tennessee is just coming off of its 225th birthday. Uh, we were talking about birthdays there. My birthday's in six days. I'm always here around my birthday. I'll be 49 this year on September 22nd, the night of your party. So party for me uh, that night. But what we have here, the state produced, uh, as part of the state's 225th birthday, a series of three prints. You have the East Tennessee print, the, uh, this is the West Tennessee print, and you have the Middle Tennessee print. These frame up very nice individually, or really nice in a frame together, uh, East, Middle, and West. If you would like a set of these prints, I actually have enough of them that you could wallpaper your house with them. <laughs> but if you just want one set, I'd like for you to have some. So I've got some of these slips of paper and I'm going to start them around. And if you'll write your name and address in a legible way, uh, we will send you a set of these prints uh, in the mail. But just take and, and somebody make sure that I get these back at the end so I can send them to you. Just give me your name and address, start this around. If you'd like a set of those prints, uh, I'd love for you to have one. Uh, they've been very popular and, and uh, there's a lot of them and it's hard to get the word out and everything, <clears throat> but uh, I'd love for you to have one. Today is, did y'all know it was a race weekend? Uh, it is. Uh, I have a 10 year old son, he's out of school today. And uh, it's a true story best kind of story. Uh, my uh, wife and I were, were at the house this morning. I drove in from Nashville last night and we were talking about the day. And uh, my son's name is Max and, and my wife said, Max, you know, what do you want to do today? I said, your dad is in town. You may want to spend the day with him. Uh, or there's a ninja camp um, there in Bristol. Bristol, Virginia, uh, and a, kind of a take on the American Ninja Warrior for kids. She said, you can, go to your, you can go to Ninja Camp or you can spend the day with your dad. And he said, Dad, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm going down to a club and having lunch and, and then speaking. He said, you mean one of those places where people drink? And uh, <laughs> I said, no, a different kind of club. <clears throat> and you see he's not here, so you see what he chose. But that's a true story. That's a true story. Alan, I do appreciate the uh, invitation back. Uh, this is my 26th year of state service, about to start my 27th year of state service in November, uh, but it's great to be here. One thing I will say as well is that uh, uh, I wanna ask you all to please remember to keep uh, Governor Lee and First Lady Maria Lee in your prayers. Uh, our First Lady is very sick. Uh, you've seen in the media that she has lymphoma, which is a blood cancer, and uh, she's undergoing a very rigorous treatment for that. And um, because her immune system is depleted, uh, Governor Lee has had to step back from a lot of things that he would normally be doing this time of year because, uh, uh, you know, it's tough to be around a lot of people and shaking their hand and hugging their neck uh, when you have somebody with a depleted immune system. But uh, please say a prayer for her in particular and, and him as well uh, as they're doing the jobs they have to do for Tennessee. So 
Uh, with that being said, we'll start off on our first slide, and I'm going to move pretty fast today. I think I have some interesting things to tell you, uh, and you can go ahead and advance to the next one, but I always like to tell you about the budget. You know, being the comptroller of the Treasury, uh, everything I do has to do with money, and uh, we have a lot of it in Tennessee this year. The job I do uh, has, has to do with, there's a state representative, David Hawk. He's, he's a very handsome man. Um, <laughs> I'm occasionally mistaken for David Hawk, which makes me understand just how handsome he is. Uh, so everything, everything in my office that I have to do has to do with money. And in Tennessee, we have a lot of it right now, a record amount. Our, our budget for the year this year is $53.3 billion. That's a lot of money. When I think back to my first term in the legislature 26 years ago, our budget was less than 20 billion. Uh, Mike, what do you remember it being? Mike was chairman of the budget subcommittee. In the mid 20s when he came, so it's grown, right? It was eight when Alan was there. So $53.3 billion is what it takes to uh, run the state every year. Um, that includes uh, federal money coming to the state, that includes state revenues, and that includes um, uh, fees and, and tuition and things collected, but $53.3 billion. You can advance the slide. You know, I think I, I tell you a little bit about this every year, the process uh, of the things, of the way the budget is put together. Of course, with any governor, the budget starts with the governor. The governor introduces, drafts the budget and introduces it. Uh, the legislature takes that draft and makes the necessary corrections and then returns it to the governor. Uh, and so uh, that is kind of the process. Next slide. You say $53.3 billion is a lot of money. Where does that money come from? So you can see right up there on the pie chart, 26.6 billion is our state revenue. That's about 49.3% of the budget. The federal money that's coming in uh, is, uh, if I can see, 19.8 billion. Um, and uh, then you have other money that comes in from things like uh, tuition and fees, uh, very little bit of debt. You see there reflected in the bonds about 600 uh, million. Uh, and then you have uh, some service fees. But any way you look at it, even though the budget is 53.3 billion, Tennessee remains uh, one of the lowest tax states in the nation, if not the lowest when you combine state and local taxes together. So Tennessee is a very low tax state, yet we have a very healthy budget. Now, where do we spend that $53.3 billion? You can see right there on the screen. This has remained unchanged for, for quite, a, quite a time. The top five expenses of the $53.3 billion budget, education, 10 care, social services, transportation, and corrections. Remember, 53.3, 40.1 billion, all but 13 billion go to these five things together. And so uh, that is, is mainly what our uh, money is spent on in Tennessee. You can see up there that education receives the largest appropriation of state tax revenue uh, on a total budget basis, 10 care second, and there's quite a bit of federal money that goes into funding 10 care. But you can see in, in the total, in the top five categories right there, more than 75% of our budget is spent on those five things. But I talked about, and you can turn to the next slide, um, about money going to education. And it's clear if you look at the state's budget that education is the top priority of the Tennessee General Assembly. And this year, the legislature took this uh, seriously and took a hard look at, really, over a long period of time, the governor and the legislature have taken a hard look at education funding. And the fiscal year 23 budget, the budget that went into effect on July 1st this year, includes the largest increase to K-12 education spending in Tennessee history. Uh, the legislature mm -hmm. and the governor put an extra $1 billion in K-12 education funding uh, to bring Tennessee's total education spending up to over $6.5 billion. Uh, the new funding formula hasn't begun yet. It will begin with the, the uh, uh, 23 school year, the school year that begins in August of 23. 
But one interesting thing about this funding formula, and yeah, I'm sure you've heard many years about the, the now old BEP formula, uh, which was, depending on your perspective, complained about, pretty, complained about pretty universally, really, regardless of what your perspective was. Uh, this is a new funding formula. This formula is more student-based uh, instead of resource-based, and uh, it will result in, in really every school district in Tennessee receiving more funds than they would under the BEP. Uh, one interesting thing about the budget that uh, starts next year is that it will include uh, more than $125 million to increase teacher salaries. And so that is something I know people think is very important. You can move to the next slide. Uh, and I know I'm moving fast, but have a lot to cover. There's a lot of good news to talk about, and then I want to take your questions if you have them. One thing I no doubt you've heard about, I think I talked about it kind of on the front end of things as we gathered last year, is the American Rescue Plan dollars. <clears throat> the American Rescue Plan, uh, you may know, was adopted by the United States Congress uh, back in March of 2021 and uh, was a multi-billion dollar program that sent money to every state. And Tennessee's share of the American Rescue Plan was more than $4 billion. Uh, local governments, cities and counties received $2.2 billion. Uh, school systems received more than $2 billion. And then the state of Tennessee received $3.4 billion of American Rescue Plan funds. Now, to give you an example of what that means locally, Sullivan County uh, received more than $30 million in ARP funds, and the city of Kingsport received more than $10 million of ARP funds. Now, like any federal program, there are a lot of rules associated with the money. Uh, of the $3.4 billion uh, received by the state of Tennessee, uh, we, and, and I say we, I'm on the committee that, that doles out that money, um, we have decided to invest, and you can change the slide, we have decided to invest a great deal, $1.35 billion <coughs> worth of our state dollars. We have decided to invest that, not in the state, but back into local governments to enhance and match spending on water, wastewater, and stormwater development in cities and counties and utility districts across the state. Now, <clears throat> one thing that I like to say is, Jason, or one thing I like to say is, if somebody says, Jason, when you get up in the morning as comptroller and you look out across the landscape of Tennessee, from a, from a fiscal standpoint, from a dollar standpoint, where does the greatest danger lie? And I think I told you last year, I'll tell you again this year, my biggest concern from a fiscal standpoint always lies underground in utilities because there is not a community in this state that doesn't have an aging utility infrastructure in the ground and it is extraordinarily expensive to fix it to build it. It's more expensive today than it was when I talked about it last year, and, and that's an issue. Um, so the state is spending $1.35 billion of its $3.4 billion to match water, wastewater, and stormwater spending at the local government level. In addition to that, over the past couple years, we've all come to know exactly how important it is to have access to the internet. Whether, whether you are working from home, whether your kids are trying to study from home, uh, you need the internet in the home. My son transitioned into the fourth grade this year. When he did that, they gave him a school-issued laptop. There are no more textbooks. There are no more worksheets. It is all on that school-sponsored laptop. Honestly, that's been a little bit of a rough transition uh, for him, for my wife. Uh, uh, for all of us, my wife actually takes screenshots of the computer screen with her phone, emails them to herself, then prints them out on the printer. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure about that method, but, but it seems to be working. But uh, I, I tell you that story to point out just how important it is to have broadband in the home. So, the state has dedicated more than $500 million of a, uh, the state's ARP funds to expand broadband. That includes over $100 million to actually help low-income Tennesseans 
pay to have broadband service in their home. Because you know what? You can run internet across every square inch of this state, but if somebody can't pay the monthly bill to tap into it, they don't have the internet. And uh, you know, we're reaching a point in this world, and this is, this is something very interesting to talk about, and I have a degree in economics and like to talk about and think about uh, those type of matters. But you know, we're getting to a point in the world where you know, it's important to me that I have internet. I want to be able to stay in touch. I want to be able to send my email. I want to be able to watch my Netflix. But we've really gotten to the point in the world where it's important to me that you have internet. Because if I'm an employer and need you to work from home, or if I'm an employer and want the future uh, workforce to be educated, which sometimes has to happen at home, you need your neighbor to have internet. So when you get to the point in society that it becomes important that not only you have a service, but the community at large have a service, that's where you teeter on something becoming a public utility. And I think it's going to be interesting to watch broadband in the next few years uh, go from um, you know, a service that's cool to have or, or convenient to have to really maybe becoming more of a public necessity. And, and that's something to watch in the economy and watch in the world. Now, one interesting thing <clears throat> is that we have also dedicated uh, more than $100 million to mitigate impacts on food supply chains. It's funny that we're standing in the back of a grocery store, the greatest job I've ever had in my life from age 16 to 19, still today, even being comptroller, the greatest job I've ever had in my life is working at Food City. I worked there, started on October 10th, 1989, and worked there from age 16 to 19. Uh, the grocery house is kind of a clearing house of life. Uh, everybody needs to eat, everybody comes to the grocery store, uh, fundamental to my life. But I mention it because we have all seen empty shelves uh, in the grocery store over the past few years, uh, and we have learned what this pandemic has done, and really it has exposed a weakness in our food supply chain. And uh, that is something we've all experienced. We're spending some money to do things like just over in Washington County. Uh, we have dedicated some money in the state budget this year to a, to a new uh, locally owned and operated slaughterhouse so that farmers in Upper East Tennessee will have an easier opportunity to take their livestock to market and people in, in Upper East Tennessee will have a, <clears throat> excuse me, an easier opportunity to purchase that meat uh, with, a, with a new expanded uh, slaughterhouse right over in Washington County. Now, one thing I will say, and here's a fun fact that you probably won't hear many other places, lots of interesting things happened during the pandemic, lots of innovations, uh, certain things went up, certain things went down, but Tennessee rocketed up to number two in the nation in what? In goat meat production. Um, who knew? Who knew? That, uh, as again, there's a fun fact. If you hear that one anywhere else, they heard it from me first. <clears throat> Zane, where is Zane? Zane, you may have known that. That's a, that's a, that's a big Farm Bureau fact. Um, Tennessee's number two in the nation now in goat meat production. So uh, any of you that eat goat, you know, it may have come from Tennessee. Um, Moving on, moving on to the next slide, some accomplishments in the state budget this year. Uh, Tennessee has had record revenue. Tennessee has had record revenue. Of course, the way we put our budget together, we forecast revenue, we meet with economists, we forecast what we think the economy is going to do, we set a growth rate, we always intentionally set that growth rate conservatively so that we, we, we plan to bring in a surplus. But who knew we would bring in $4.6 billion in surplus money in the last fiscal year alone? Uh, people in Tennessee are spending money, so the General Assembly took the opportunity to return it uh, to the people of Tennessee, over $281 million in tax cuts. Uh, the budget, of course, maintains fiscal responsibility. Uh, there was some good legislation this year that was aimed at uh, ensuring public safety. We built the Rainy Day Fund. The Rainy Day Fund now stands at a record level of $1.8 billion. You think, man, $1.8 billion is a lot of money. It's not enough money to run the state for 30 days. Um, the, uh, the greatest financial practice is to have at least um, 
uh, 22 to 25 percent of your annual budget into in a rainy day fund. Uh, as I've already told you, the budget prioritizes education and reduces future liabilities. Next slide. Um, some of the things specifically that you did, one thing that the General Assembly did is it eliminated the state portion of the license plate registration fee uh, that you have to pay for next year. In Sullivan County, if your cars are tagged in Sullivan County, you know there is no wheel tax in Sullivan County. So you will either have zero to a very minimal fee uh, to renew your license plates next year. You know, in Tennessee, we don't have an income tax. And so when you think about giving, giving revenue back to citizens, we don't have that, that way to just do a tax refund like you might get from the federal government. So the legislature has to find ways, meaningful ways, uh, to give that back to you. So you'll, get, uh, you'll have no uh, license plate registration fee next year. As you may know, I hope you knew, I hope you stocked up at the grocery store because there was zero sales tax on food for the entire month of August. Uh, and uh, the state, uh, some of you may have felt this, continues to eliminate the professional privilege tax uh, by reducing the number of professions it applies to. And um, in addition, I was talking about the importance of broadband in the world, in the state. Uh, the state also reduced the sales tax on broadband equipment and broadband supplies in order to incentivize companies to accelerate the deployment of broadband across Tennessee. And the legislature also voted to uh, reduce the sales tax on agricultural machinery. Agriculture, of course, is our state's number one industry. It's very important in Tennessee, whether you see it or not. Uh, agriculture remains very important and the sales tax was lowered uh, on ag machinery. Right here you can see, you can thank David Hawk for this on the way out. Tennessee remains very strong. For the third year in a row, we're ranked by U.S. News and World Report as the number one state in the nation for long-term fiscal stability. If you want any kind of, ra any kind of rating, that's, the, I think, the best one you can have. Uh, number one for long-term fiscal stability. As a Tennessean, you have a very low debt burden of the states in the nation that have debt. I think there's two that don't have any debt, but of the, of the, of the other 48 states, as a Tennessean, you have the lowest debt burden per capita in the United States. And we continue to be one of only 13 states that have a triple, triple A bond rating from all three major rating agencies. Uh, one week from today, I will be in New York City uh, on the state's bond rating trip. Uh, we are going to be meeting with Fitch and Moody's and Standard and & Poor's, laying out the case for us to maintain our triple, triple A rating, and I believe we will this year. Uh, so that is very good. That means savings to you as a taxpayer. Um, and I'll talk about this more in a minute, but uh, in addition to uh, having legislation to keep citizens safe, having low taxes, rebuilding our economy. We are heralded as one of the best states in the nation for business in Tennessee, and we'll talk more about some of the expansion we have had in Tennessee uh, right there. But before I get there, let me say, let's turn to this next slide. In Tennessee, our state has weathered this pandemic and been very successful. We're one of only seven states in the nation to prosper financially during the pandemic. As I mentioned, our revenue collections are very strong, and we actually led the nation in GDP growth in 2021. And you see this, <clears throat> this quote from the Wall Street Journal from back on July 6, 2022, uh, and, and I just love this quote. Let me read it. Tennessee's unemployment hit an all-time low of 3.2% in April, according to federal data, dating back to 1976. Its workers saw some of the biggest gains in weekly earnings from all states last year. Its economy grew by 8.6% last year, leading all states. So <clears throat> we have very good things happening in Tennessee. Um, and if you need more evidence of that, look right here. I'm sure this is some things that you've heard of. Um, you know, thinking back to the beginning of 2021, back to January of 2021. The state of Tennessee, our Department of Economic Development, set a goal to recruit 14,000 new jobs to Tennessee. The goal was 14,000. 
when we closed out 2021, we had successfully recruited more than 34,000 jobs to Tennessee. Likewise, now that was jobs. When we started 2021, our goal was to recruit $1.5 billion worth of capital, new capital investment in Tennessee, 1.5 billion. When the end of the year came last year, we had recruited successfully $12.8 billion worth of capital investment in Tennessee. The goal was 1.5, we ended with 12.8. And you know, I'm sure you've heard the news, some of the biggest investments came from people like Ford Motor Company, Oracle, uh, Chewy, Ultim Sales, and Smith & Wesson, which relocated its plant from Springfield, Massachusetts, which had been there since 1852 to Maryville, Tennessee. Now let me talk in particular about the Ford deal for just a minute. I'm sure you've heard some of this. You know, <clears throat> and I held up these prints focusing on East, Middle, and West Tennessee. Um, the Ford plant is being built out uh, kind of in, in Haywood County, which is just, just east of Memphis. And you might say to me, Jason, why, what does it matter to me as an Upper East Tennessean? Uh, about that Ford plant out in West Tennessee. You know, we live closer to Ontario, Canada than we do Memphis. Did you know that? That's a fact. We live closer to Ontario, Canada than Memphis. But I'll tell you that rural West Tennessee has not been in the same shape that we have been in here in Upper East or East Tennessee or Middle Tennessee. Over the past decade or, or more, rural West Tennessee has really become very empty. It has become, uh, people have had no opportunity there. They have moved away to other states. They have, they, they have moved to other areas of Tennessee. It has really been, in, in some ways, a wasteland. And the state, many years ago, more than 10 years ago, invested in, in 4,000 acres out there and turned it into a mega site, hoping to lure something. And for a long time, and Michael remember this, it looked like we were just spinning our wheels, didn't it? Uh, looks like we had made a bad investment in those 4,000 acres. But you know what? Something hit. Ford Motor Company is building the largest automobile manufacturing plant in the history of the world in West Tennessee. Uh, it is a $5.5 billion investment. When they are done, they will employ 27,000 people. Now, a lot has to happen before that comes to complete fruition, and the legislature gave a big grant to Ford to bring that in. But Ford came to Tennessee for a reason. Ford came to Tennessee because of all the things I've been describing to you. The friendly business climate, the low tax burden. Uh, and, and I will tell you the reason I'm excited about this as somebody who lives in Upper East Tennessee is because it doesn't do any of us any good if you have a third of your state that is withering. Okay, it doesn't do any of us any good if you have a third of your state where people are leaving the state and not remaining as citizens and taxpayers here. So I promise you, way up here in Upper East Tennessee, we will feel the impact of this Ford plant here. Um, and it is going to be good for Tennessee. It is good for the nation and people are coming to Tennessee left and right. Uh, in addition to these companies I've named, Tennessee is, the, uh, is now the second largest manufacturer of, anybody want to guess? Tires. Tennessee is the second largest manufacturer of tires in the nation. Uh, Bridgestone and Hankook are massively expanding their operations right now in Tennessee. Uh, and uh, we make a lot of tires, a lot of cars, I mean Volkswagen General Motors, now Ford, we make a lot of cars, we make a lot of tires. You know, a lot of people are calling us the Detroit of the South, the entire state of Tennessee, uh, seeing a, a, a great, great revival uh, there. So with that, I know we're going to the last slide, and then I can take some questions if you have them. Let me say that with all the good that I have talked about, there, and this is the way life is, right? There are always some challenges. Inflation is a big challenge uh, uh, in Tennessee and in the nation. You know, off, off the top, inflation actually helps bring in more revenue to the state of Tennessee on the front end because as pro when prices go up, you know, the sales tax is a percentage of your, of your, of your price, right? 
And so in the, in the short term, you see higher revenues as a result of inflation. But we all know and we all have felt what happens when inflation impacts us, soon people quit buying stuff altogether. They eliminate parts of their, their budget and uh, then that impacts your revenue. Inflation is a real problem and what has fueled inflation in the United States is the massive federal spending like you have seen there in the American Rescue Plan and things like that. Uh, that's just a simple economic principle. Uh, you know, it's just like with the, uh, doesn't matter how you feel about it. it, I mean, economics are economics, you know, just like black is white, black and white. Um, 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 the, the student loan relief or whatever you want to call it, that is going to fuel inflation. That is federal spending. Uh, and, and we've got to get a clamp on that soon or it's just gonna, gonna keep the economy in the ditch. Uh, in Tennessee and in the nation, uh, while we do have a low unemployment rate, you know, the unemployment rate uh, does not really count the people who have dropped out of the labor force. We have a labor force participation rate problem in Tennessee. Right now, uh, that has fluctuated in the, in, the, in, in the time of the pandemic to different, different groups. At the beginning of the pandemic, we had young women drop out of the labor force. Uh, they have actually come back to a great degree. In Tennessee right now, young white males are the segment of the population that we are missing in the labor force. And so we do have, I mean, I don't need to tell you about it, right? You've been to a restaurant lately, you've, you, you, you feel it, right? Uh, so you understand. In Tennessee and in the nation, we have a labor force participation rate problem. That is something uh, that we need to see corrected. And as I mentioned, we have a supply chain problem. You know, you think about utilities, it's so hard to get utility infrastructure. We're competing with the world, the nation and the world uh, for things like utility pipe. I mean, we're competing for food, we're competing for everything. We still have not worked the kinks out of our, our supply chain problem. Uh, I actually, since I've been here with you last, moved into a new house. We moved four tenths of a mile which is just awful. I mean, it's just, it's as hard as moving 4,000 miles. Because uh, it, it seems like four tenths of a mile, you can do so much of it yourself. I mean, it seems that way, right? Well, that's just awful. Don't ever do that. Uh, take my word for it. Uh, but uh, we have a bed for my son that we ordered in January, which is supposed to be here next month. Uh, so he, he sleeps in a mattress on the floor. <laughs> Uh, because the side rails to his bed aren't here. Uh, so we hope they get here in October, although he likes the mattress on the floor. He doesn't fall out of bed, you know. Uh, so with that being said, I, I'm closing out on the headwinds, but let me actually close out by saying you should be proud to be a Tennessean. Tennessee, I promise you, is the envy of the nation right now. I just was on a panel with the comptroller from California and at the end of the panel, she turned to me and she said, I wish I could be in Tennessee. I said, well, come on over and bring the weather with you. It's a lot less humid out there in California than it is here. Leave your politics at home. Yeah, leave your politics at home. That part is true. So we have, you should be proud to be to Tennessee. We have a lot of good things going on in the state. Don?